a Tower of God content. This one's called the webtoon that popularized anime adaptations by what's this guy's name? At Gabe. Give it to me. We all watch media which are adaptations of other media. Tell me, how many of your favorite shows are adaptations of something else? I presume a lot of them. Adaptations of something else. Adap I don't understand. I love anime. Animes are an adaptation of something else. Them are. A lot of mine are, at least. When it comes to adaptations, there's always a... F like an adaptation of the manga. Adaptation of a, like a webtoon. Light novel, right? Anime itself is a form of adaptation. That makes sense. First. And there's always one to popularize the idea of those type of adaptations. The first book to get adapted into a movie was Cinderella in 1899. The Mario okay. Bros movie adaptation in 1986 was the first movie adaptation of a video game. And lastly, we have today's topic, which even though it wasn't the first, it was an adaptation of a webtoon called Tower of God. Yeah, Tower of God, I know that it's not the first webtoon in, right? but... I think like God of High School tried to make its thing, but it did. It kind of flopped on release, right? In the beginning, it was really hyped up. I mean, you look at the opening after reaction, right? The opening, like God of High School anime opening on YouTube was like so amazing. But I think that the anime itself was kind of trash based on what people are saying. So it kind of flopped. But Tower of God probably did a better job in representing how good potentially, you know, webtoon animes could be. God, and it was a fantastic adaptation made by Studio Telecom Animation Films in 2020. And on top of that, it ended up popularizing anime adaptations of webtoons. Let me explain why. Let's start with explaining what Tower of God is about, though. Okay. Because, you know, we have to start somewhere, and that's a pretty good place to start. Tower of God is an anime about a young boy by the name of Bomb, who follows his only friend, a girl by the name of Rachel, into a tower as she one thing, I think the background piano music is too fucking loud. Like, it needs to be like, I don't know, I'm trying to like listen to this guy, but like the background music is a bit too distracting. He wants to climb the tower to see the stars for the first time, and Bomb follows her into the tower as he doesn't want to be alone. Within the tower, Bomb and many others are asked to take part in tests, which are presented to them, and if they pass the test in question, they move further up the tower. However, we- Tower of test, bro. Every I'm realizing like we're never gonna end the test because like the tests are the core of these battles. At least it's they're trying to make it unique and interesting rather than have like an unga boonga one v one every time. Learn very quickly that a lot of the people in the tower are more than willing to do anything to reach their goals. This on its own sets up for a nice and mysterious premise as we are introduced to a couple characters which we know little to nothing about early on, but end up learning the goals, ambitions, inspirations, and motivations off over the show's episodes. A lot of the time okay. thanks to great dialogue in combination with fantastic world building. The world within the tower is an interesting one. We get to see all types of biomes throughout the show. This could be anything from vast fields to caverns to oceans, yet most if not all of these areas stand out a lot. Yeah, I think that the tower floors are... I never would have imagined that floors in like an encapsulated tower would look like open field. I know that the sky is not real, but each floor has seemed pretty unique. Even in season 2 right now, it's like a whole... It feels like I'm in like the middle of downtown somewhere. ...of the time on their own. On top of this, a lot of the time, the area they are in reflects well on the story in itself. If they are in a dark cave, in example, we get to see some truly nasty personality traits or actions committed by people within the show. And when it's brighter in, for example, a field, it tends to be more lighthearted and comic, which really helps... So dark shading means bad things happen, light shading means good thing happens. Race! I'm kidding. ...helps in setting the tone for the show. The anime also not only had an absolute banger of an opening by the name of Top, performed by the K-pop group Stray Kids, but also a fantastic end. <laughs> never let you go, never let you go. Yeah, the opening was pretty good. ...thing by the name of Slump, performed by the same group. That is... The thing I hate about the ending is that the visuals is just Rachel. Fuck that bitch. I hated that. The song was decent, but it's just like a... Slow camera pan of Rachel sleeping on the field and like, nah. In my personal opinion, even better than the opening, but hey, to each our own. Along with this, this show has one of my personal favorite soundtracks in anime. And fantastic soundtrack by Australian composer Kevin, Kevin Penkin. Kevin Penkins. He is Australian. Okay. Kevin Penkins, any Kevin Penkin anime I think has been just like mid, like... There's like animes where soundtrack just hard carries the anime. I think that Hiroki Sano is a perfect example where there's a lot of like mid animes that had his music, but his music, I think it just made it like viable to watch. Kevin Penkin's soundtracks like Made in Abyss, 
Shield Hero Season 1, Tower of God, and I can't on the top of my head name another one, but those, it's always been fantastic. You end up with a fantastic show which sets very high expectations and standards for future webtoons. There were some complaints that the pacing being too fast at the time of the Hey retard! Do you not realize that I'm fucking recording a video right now? You come in here with the first fucking message, I ignore you because I'm reacting to a fucking video. Then you start to ask personal questions. I should ban your ass right now, but I know you're new. So take a fucking two week vacation. Get the fuck out of here. Stupid kids coming in here trying to be like, Oh, please, Mr. Dreamer, can you answer my personal questions? I'm so important, even though I clearly see you're doing something else. Like, Jesus Christ, have a little bit of like common sense and awareness. Back to Tower of God. The show's release due to cramping 70 plus chapters into a 12 episode anime season which i do completely get as it can feel very fast paced at times due to its format but even then i did at the time i hear a lot of people's complaint about season one was the pacing and that it was too fast and they're missing out too much details but as an anime only i thought it was like again i don't know what i'm missing out on because that's why i thought it was like well paced and everything was fine but again like the webtoon readers saying nah it was glossing over too many details and, you know, they could have fleshed it out a bit more, but as an anime only experience, I didn't really feel like that. I am still because like, I don't know what I'm missing out on, I guess, but still, if like an anime only experience was good enough to, uh, to the point I can follow the plot line, I think that's a decent adaptation. Do feel as if this was mostly a nitpick as the show still kept everything important to the show story and they executed on it very well. With all of this in mind, it's pretty clear why Tower of God's anime adaptation ended up getting as popular as it did, and it only helped that it was considered to be one of the best banwas on webtoon, which I can agree with after recently picking it up with the- Yeah, and how much hype was actually being built up for Tower of God before it released? Cause like, shows like solo leveling, right? How many trailers, how many PVs, how many different, you know, marketing campaigns has gone through to the point where it, it was so successful upon launch. I know the DVD sales and stuff like that, apparently it was trash, but in terms of just like, average uh, hype on the internet online presence like it was pretty high i wonder if tower of god also had that kind of factor going into it then it kind of exploded in popularity the release of season two now these are not the only reasons for its success webtoon in itself had blown up in popularity only a couple years prior to the release of the okay. tower of god anime i remember being in high school in 2018 and seeing content creators such as jeff thu from other spacemen and joey <laughs> also known as the anime man talking about webtoons such as let's play which only helped them grow in popularity it was pretty clear when tower of god started reaching the top of the charts on webtoon that it was genuinely fantastic as well the fact that webtoon was at an all-time high at the time with its popularity skyrocketing in combination with the announcement of the anime adaptation of tower of god it really wasn't surprising that a lot of people ended up checking out the anime adaptation the popularity of tower of god was incredible and get this bitch off my screen right now it felt as if everyone was talking about it and on top of this, a lot of content creators were making videos on it, such as Grant, also known as Gig UK Arizona, also known as the Anime Zone, and a couple people. What? What did you say? How did you pronounce this name? Is this an inside meme that I don't understand? Videos on it, such as Grant, also known as Grant, so he's already, you know, fucking up Garnt, but intentionally. I'm just assuming that, you know, this is a meme in itself that I'm not understanding. As Gig UK Arizona. Gig UK Arizona, more insider memes that I don't understand. Also known as the Anime Zone, and a couple people might know him under the name Garnt or Gigak, but you know, not even. I think that I just didn't get the joke. Yeah, it's just an old meme. Got it. I just didn't get the joke. People at his wedding got it right. <laughs> We also saw Moist Critical make a Moist Meter video on Tower of God where he praised the show very highly. Essentially what I'm getting at here is that there was no surprise that Tower of God ended up as successful as it did. It had the popularity from its webtoon which was booming in popularity at the time, content creators were talking about it highly okay. on their platforms, and lastly but most importantly was clearly a high quality show that received very high reviews. With the popularity that Tower of God's anime adaptation received, you would assume that people would jump at the opportunity of making other webtoon anime adaptations. I mean, why did High School, God of High School fail then? Because it was also pretty hyped up, right? But maybe many, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know like how popular God of High School is relative to Tower of God. And you would think that if such a, I know it's a big title though. Wonder what happened with other, you know, content creators, talking about the show it was just mid 
maybe it's like it had all the hype surrounding it and people were talking about it but the anime just itself the you know the substance was just not there and it's just that simple they rushed it maybe we have to check out you know god of high school one of these days so we can understand you know what happened to the animes but i guess it's just as simple as the anime was ass the tower of god I know a lot of people complain about the pacing, but for the anime only experience, I think it, you know, executed fine. So that's why it, you know, succeeded. Adaptations. And you wouldn't be surprised if you heard about popular webtoons receiving adaptations shortly after. Two of the mm. most notable anime adaptations of webtoons. Solo leveling. I'm not sh Yeah. God of High School. Returner's Magic Should Be Special was also like a pretty... Not as like popular as solo leveling or like those titles, but it was pretty still popular, right? But I, I, I don't think it got the advertisement and like the amount of attention. But I, I don't, not many people even know about it. Omniscient reader's viewpoint should be coming up soon. Tunes the same year are God of High School and Noblesse. How Wait, Noblesse actually had an anime? A lot of people talk about, you know, Noblesse as well. It just looks like an Ikemen fucking BL Yaoi anime to me. Is this actually good? Cause like I hear a lot about Noblesse. There's like, isn't this like one of the OGs of you know webtoons? <laughs> I look at it, it just looks like a bunch of pretty boys doing pretty boy things. But like, who knows? Maybe it's actually goaded. Noblesse. However, they sadly would not end up meeting the expectations nor the hype that everyone had for them. Tower of God was such a success that, in all honesty, there was an expectation set for the rest of the webtoons to keep up with, which, in my opinion at least, was their downfall. Some people would argue a variety of reasons to why, but. My take, at least for God of High School, as I haven't seen the Bless, it, it was just ass. Is that they were just unfortunate to come after Tower of God. Tower of God had really the reasoning that he is giving us right now is that God of High School dropped after Tower of God's success and was being compared to it, and therefore failed. Is that an accurate assessment, or is it just simply? That God of High School was a rushed product that people just realized was very mid. Now, you can compare the two, for sure, because they are webtoon animes, right? For sure, I'm sure made, people made the comparisons of, you know what, God of High School just didn't hit and it compared to Tower of God. It's a combination of both, right? I doubt that it, like, if the anime of God of High School was actually that good, then people would love it, along with Tower of God. But it's probably a combination of the two. It's such a high quality that it set an expectation that most anime adaptations would struggle to meet, whether webtoons or not. And it was clear that those expectations hurt the other adaptations due to people expecting too much out of them. And with these two shows falling short due to these high expectations, people would start talking less and less about upcoming webtoon adaptations, which really was a shame as there was so much potential there. After a couple years, with a few somewhat successful but no mainstream adaptations, well, at least... Oh, this is season 2 opening. Not to the six of... Well, at least not to the success of Tower of God or even God of High School. It genuinely seemed like the next popular adaptation might be the second season of Tower of God. Are we just gonna ignore its solo leveling? <laughs> like, hello? Solo leveling aired like six months ago, bro? And then Tower of God dropped... Anyways, okay. But then suddenly an anime for the popular webcomic solo leveling... Yeah! There it is! There it is! ...announced. Which, whilst it isn't from Webtoon, the company, it is still... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's so, like, I know that there's a generic term called Webtoon that kind of describes, like, manhwa, right? Vertical scrolling. But there is an actual, like, brand Webtoon. And, and even though, like, solo leveling, I consider Webtoon because, you know, it's, it's, it's a manhwa... It's a webtoon, anyways. It's like it's, it's it's there is an actual fucking company called like webtoon, but it's it's I still call it a webtoon. Pretty much the same thing, just from a competitor. God damn it! Technical difficulties. One second. Three, two, one, and we're back. Company. It is still pretty much the same thing, just from a competitor. Agreed. So I'm just gonna count it as the same thing for this video, but you know what? I'll be saying Webtoon for it, but I know it's not for Webtoon. If you want to read some solo leveling, you can find it on Taptoon, but I'll be using Webtoon. <laughs> Taptoon. Webtoon. I just call that all that shit just Webtoons. As more of like a filler word for general webcomics or like manwas. With solo leveling having grown insanely popular, and being almost everywhere in 2021, its anime release got instantly hyped up. But there was also yeah. some worry due to previous webtoon adaptations, although the hype drowned it out heavily. And then, in 2024, we got it. The anime adaptation of Solo Leveling blew up in popularity yes. straight off the bat. In 
it was crazy the amount of preparation going into solo leveling. I remember like like how many separate trailers were given throughout the course of 2023 before you know January 2024 to launch solo leveling. It was crazy the amount of people talking about it, hyping it up. You know, people like Gigag again, like you know we're doing the pre hype now. You know the hype is all about omniscient readers' viewpoints, but everything just had it going pre release and then upon release. I know a lot of people complain about episode one because you know it just wasn't that hook people wanted but episode two was that hook and the common complaint is i just wish that episode one and two was combined and they did like a one hour release for episode one that would have been perfect and it was incredibly successful well outside of one recap episode which we don't talk about oh yeah i mean with storia this coming week is also gonna have a recap episode i don't really give a fuck i much prefer them take their time and you know well, i'm sure a recap what, what why is a recap happening is it because of their own scheduling conflicts? I'm not really sure, but I, it's not a big deal to me. You know, we, we can skip that. With this, it showed a lot of what really was needed from these webtoon adaptations that we got a lot of after Tower of God. What we needed really wasn't many of them, or quantity of them, but rather quality ones. Ones that could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tower of God and other popular anime. And to a lot of people, so leveling was better than yes. Tower of God. Which Absolutely! Now, I don't care whether or not you think the story of Tower of God's better in solo leveling. I'm speaking pure numbers. I'm speaking pure media presence. Solo leveling took over the internet. But I wasn't there for Tower of God season one. That's the thing. I'm just kind of basing it on like season two performance and, you know, the hype surrounding it versus solo leveling. But like in January, bro, like everybody was fucking watching solo leveling. Every fucking normie was getting into this and it was getting so hype. Everybody was milking the shit out of that series. Was TOG season one kind of like that? I'm not really sure because again, I just I just wasn't there. What was I doing back then? <laughs> fucking no, probably just fucking in college or something. Just too fucking busy to watch. Which is clear from its 8.3 rating on Mal, aka my animalist, compared to Tower of God's 7.55 rating. I don't think these Mal scores are really representative of whether or not it's an actually better anime or, you know, the fucking the popularity i think that stuff like google trends is nice to kind of see how many people are seeking out that specific term but just based off of a vibe just field checking right no no numbers no facts no math just vibe check i think solo leveling was way bigger there were a lot of people considering this to be more of a one-off success though as an adaptation comparing it to tower of god and set expectations that another one as good might not be released for another couple of years but let's be honest here they were wrong let me explain why. Now at the start of July, the second season of Tower of God finally started airing, mm -hmm. and it started off with a bang. We got to see a well-made 40-minute recap video released on Crunchyroll's YouTube channel for it, and with its two episodes so far, yeah. has for sure met its hype and is turning out really good. It is. I hear that people are having a fucking meltdown in the TOG subreddit with the most recent episode calling the animation just a PowerPoint presentation. I know a lot of people are upset and making, you know, they're just like dying on a hill that like season one animation was like way better. I probably agree, but I don't think season two is so bad. Was the last episode that bad? I thought the first cup two episodes was amazing in terms of entertainment and hype. Episode three was obviously a little bit slower because now we're kind of setting up. The first half of the episode also focused around a bunch of characters that were brand new to. We don't really give a fuck about them just, right? So I could totally understand, but like a lot of people apparently are very mad. I'm like, really? Maybe I just am so loose with my criticism on animation quality because that's honestly the last thing that I really judge. It's already gaining a higher rating than the previous season on Mal, although not an as high one as solo leveling, and it is clear that it won't stop anytime soon. With these last two amazing webtoon anime adaptations, which we have seen this year, it was very much clear that webtoon are back on the radar for a lot of people and as yeah. ironic as it might be tower of god might once again become what sets expectations for the future webtoon anime mm, i don't know i uh i love tower of god listen i do but i don't think this is gonna be the thing that really takes it to the next gear i think it's gonna be omniscient readers viewpoint i think that every anime obviously with like new seasons coming out there's always a group of people that gets filtered out. The reason why, for example, Oshinoko right now is doing worse than Roche today was that people just simply got filtered out. It's just simple math of like not everyone's going to be continuing watching a season once, you know, one season has ended, right? 
I think that Tower of God Season 2 will be decent. And I think it'll be very entertaining. And I'm very happy that it's happening. But I don't think that it's going to create this massive surge in some kind of Webtoon movement. You know, saying, oh my god, we love Webtoon anime. I think that Omniscient Reader's viewpoint will be just like that. Just like how solo leveling was back in Season 1 in January. Expectations, but this time with its second season instead of its first. But we'll have to wait and see what we get coming here next. ORV! So... I'm Talk about it! I'm excited for this, and I'm looking forward to see what they can cook up. With all Damn, no ORV mentioned in this video, sad. With this being sad, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, feel free to subscribe for more similar- Y'all know what to do! This guy's name is at Gabby. He's got 452 subs. Guys, go juice him up. Go like the video. Sub to his channel if you enjoy his content. I enjoyed that little, you know, video about Tower of God and, you know, how it's popular anime adaptations. What was basically the, uh, the whole logic behind it? Uh, there's a lot of hype. It was like one of the great people call it the One Piece of Webtoons. Bunch of media presence through content creators hyping that shit up. Then the anime also delivered. Yeah, makes sense why it was so good. It's just sad that, you know, God of High School is getting shit on because apparently it was trash. And I just still want to check it out. But have a lot of hype for Soul 11 Season 2 coming up. And... Omniscient Reader's Viewpoint. Tower of God, I love the series. I love Season 2. But I think that ORV is the thing that's going to take it to the next gear in this industry.